Okay, uh, let's uh, start. Uh, in the last lecture, uh, we start to discuss the excitation in, in topology out of the state, or maybe actually in general in any states, uh, in any gap state. Uh, uh, the idea is that in a gap state, it is easy to define excitation by using energy trap. So we just modify Hamiltonian by some energy trap. Then the ground state of this modified Hamiltonian is viewed as a as an excitation. The actual thing we get is that uh, the ground state may be degenerate. So therefore, uh, uh, the excitation is not just one state. Excitation is a is a subspace. So this uh, ground state subspace uh, was called a a, a a formal formal name called the fusion space because we have several trap. Is reflect the degree of freedom of several trap or several excitation is involving some fusion. So in mathematics, it's called a fusion space. So uh, then from here, we can define the uh, fusion ring. Uh, that's what we discussed uh, last time. And uh, here, uh, uh, I want to say that the fusion rule, this a fusion of this uh, uh, particle, is very much like a conservation law. So so we, are in, we, have, we, we know some much familiar situation, we see this kind of thing. For example, when we have IC2 symmetric system, you can define the uh, symmetric trap, your potential respect SU2 rotation symmetry, uh, spin rotation symmetry. Then you know that uh, uh, the ground state of each trap has to be spin zero, spin one half, spin one representation of uh, SU2. So you have degeneracy there. So therefore, each particle is not just one state. It's a, this is carry their own degeneracy and its own internal degree freedom. And we also have this fusion rule, like spin one half fused with, fused with spin one half gave us spin zero and spin one. But spin zero, spin one is a sum. And the spin one half, spin one half is time. So, so there's a times and a sum. So the both things appears. So this kind of structure actually is pretty important, I think. Uh, uh, and in physics, uh, we emphasize a lot on this uh, fusion is times, but uh, uh, but we didn't emphasize this as, uh, the possibility of a sum. And uh, so we can actually we can view this sum as also as a particle. It's just a, that's called a composite particle. Composite means a sum, not not as a fusion. Actually, when you, when you say composite, people would mean a fusion, two things put together. So actually, there's no very direct word to say when you say composite you, you you know i'm referring to direct sum and uh, and uh, so because this sum so is like a ring structure this a this a tensor like a fusion is like a product sum is a is a, like a addition so this coefficient nijk describe a fusion multiplication with possibility of sum so it's kind of it's describe a ring so that's how we call this a fusion ring so this NIJK just describing this uh, fusion ring. Okay. And uh, certainly this have an internal degree freedom. Uh, so spin zero has a one degree freedom and spin one half have two degree freedom, spin one has three degree freedom, just a degeneracy. Okay. It turns out that uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, internal degree freedom is determined completely by, by this NIJK, this, uh, this uh, fusion rule. So which we'll just describe in a moment. From NIJK, you can determine this internal degree freedom. And uh, certainly, this is spin one half is not, uh, SU2 is not simplest uh, fusion. The simplest fusion actually is a Z2 mode conservation. We have a E carry Z2 charge. Then 2E can annihilate, one means a trivial, is a vacuum. So the 2E can annihilate. So this is really the mode conservation, and that's a, that's, that's a symmetry. So the point here, I'll try to emphasize that this NIJK actually is kind of sophisticated way to describe a conservation law and a selection rule. And so that's really a sign of symmetry. You know, when I have an NIJK, you have a selection rule, you have a conservation law, that's a symmetry. For example, for this simple uh, 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 NIJK fusion rule, you get, we get the Z2 symmetry. And for this more complicated fusion rule, we should get the SU2 symmetry. So that is, a, uh, that is connection. So this really the uh, in the spirit of a try to measure symmetry group without a breaking symmetry. The, the, the point is that usually when we uh, when we, uh, we we describe symmetry by transformation, when you say transformation, you look into inside of the symmetry. You mean 
how they transform internally. And uh, however, if your equipment uh, also symmetric, then you cannot using your equipment to break symmetry and generate the transformation and measure transformation directly. So therefore, this uh, using a uh, selection rule or using this uh, conservation law to measure symmetry, it's kind of like a, we want to measure symmetry without uh, uh, without uh, uh, breaking the symmetry. So uh, so that is a thing. I think uh, that's how we measure this uh, SU3 color symmetry in a strong interaction. You, you, you can never do this SU3 transformation, but uh, some selection rule tell us uh, maybe there's SU3 symmetry there. Okay. So uh, so here I just had to say that uh, this, uh, this uh, fusion coefficient NIJK determine the internal degree freedom of the particle. Uh, the idea is that uh, uh, we can have this, uh, we can have this, uh, let me show you how this picture, yeah. So we can have this N particle. Can you imagine we have a N particle on the sphere? Uh, so it's really like this. So we have a, we have a lot of onion on the sphere. Then it have this uh, uh, degenerate low energy degenerate subspace. And that's a fusion space. And uh, so, so this fusion space is denoted as this, uh, this uh, V fuse. They uh, we have I onion, but N of them on the sphere. And then the, and then we can say, we try to view this, uh, this uh, total fusion space as a tensor product of many individual small space, each carried by the onion. Then the, the tensor product gave us a total space. So that gave us a total degeneracy. So we try to view this low energy degree freedom actually represent the internal degree freedom of each onion. So it's like a tensor product of some small vector space. Then if you follow this idea, then we can say that the dimension of this total uh, fusion space actually is a, is a dimension of each individual space raised by n's power. That's, that's when you tensor product, that's what you do. The amazing thing is that uh, uh, for topology order, uh, this fusion space can be com computed, their dimension can be computed. You will take nth root. This nth root of this usually is not integer. Although the dimension of the fusion space is integer, so that's a vector space on the sphere. But when you're taking nth root, when you try to view this as a tensor product of individual space, this may not be integer. So this is like, it's a phenomenon of a fractalization of degree freedom. You know, we, we talk about fractional charge. But even degree freedom can be fractalized, and, and it is in this sense. Uh, so basically, you create a. I think this is one way to measure onion. Uh, you know, people usually say to, to, to just say measure onion using fractional statistics by braiding, which is much harder to measure. The much more uh, stronger, uh, easier uh, expand the consequence is this in total degree, degree freedom. We will somehow we will create a lot of onion. If you know how many you created, then you measure zero temperature entropy. Then that's basically measure this so-called quantum dimension. And you don't need a phase coherence. That's a, the that's a point. You don't need a phase coherence to measure this. This should be easier one to measure. And uh, so, so why, why this kind of a quantum dimension, uh, D, that's the nth root of the total fusion space of a dimensional total fusion space? Is related to NIJK, so this is the argument. So, uh, so what is the dimension? That, so here, so if you fuse two things, uh, suppose we fuse, suppose I, you have you have two onion, I and I, then fuse into identity. And the how many? And because we have we have a sphere with the two onions, uh, these two onions can live on the sphere only in a channel where the, when these two onions fuse into identities. So, so therefore, when you have a two onions uh, fusing into identities, uh, like an E and E fuse into identity, the, the dimension of fusion space actually is a, is a number of times the identity appears. In this particular case, E and E fuse into one, that's mean on the sphere, we have two E particle, the dimension is one. However, if this coefficient is five, that means if you put two E particle on the sphere, uh, you, uh, the ground state energy will be five dimensional uh, subspace. And uh, so, uh, so th therefore this uh, NIJK basically count, counting this, uh, uh, counting the degeneracy, but we have to fuse everything into one. So here we want to fuse N of I into one. 
but there's many different ways to fuse and we can count uh, what, is, uh, what is fusion. How many one appear at the end? And the basic is following, this I, I can fuse in M1, M1 fuse into I can fuse to get M2 and etc. Then at the end, the M N minus two fuse to I get to one. So at the end, it's like this. We fuse intermediate state can be non-trivial onion, but at the end, we fuse everything into one. Then how many one appear on the other side of a fusion is just uh, given by this formula. This, uh, this, uh, this bunch of uh, N multiplied together and sum together, really counting how many one appear at the end. Okay. So it's really like uh, when you're fusing N of a speed one half, you're counting how many singlets appear at the end. It's really the same calculation. And uh, then, then this complicated expression can be written as a matrix. We can define this matrix Ni, which is given by whose ele matrix element as a JK is given by this uh, NJIK. So this, uh, this rank three tensor defines this uh, matrix Ni, but with a two index, just like this. Then uh, this whole expression became just uh, this matrix raised to n minus one power, but taking a particular element i and a one element. This uh, this particular matrix matrix raised to many many half power and take particular elements. And uh, those are integer matrix. You know, raise n power, take particular element, you certainly get an integer. But uh, but then what is the integer? Hard to compute. But on the other hand, you can now you can just uh, imagine a wave your hand and say. Well, when, take, when n is very big, uh, typically the matrix element will be controlled by the largest eigenvalue. So we assume this particular matrix element may have a non-trivial overlap with the largest eigenvalue to the nth power. So, so then you say, okay, up to some finite constant, this is like a D is largest eigenvalue of this matrix n. And that, that's how this one grows when n goes to infinity. So therefore, quantum dimension basic is the largest eigenvalue of this uh, matrix, which it can be uh, non-integer. So that's a uh, so that's a uh, so this is really a, a very important uh, feature of uh, non-abelian onion. So if the quantum dimension is one, that's the definition of abelian onion. If quantum dimension not equal to one, is definition of non-abelian onion. I think I mentioned a little bit. In, according to this definition, sp one half is non-abelian. It's a quantum dimension two. And uh, uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So the one simplest example would be this uh, so-called uh, Fibonacci fusion. So this uh, one is a trivial. So trivial fuels with trivial still trivial. And a trivial fuels with anything else uh, is uh, gives something, gave same thing back. So this, this one is like identity. Certainly this, uh, this Fibonacci fusion, there's only one non-trivial onion, there's a five. Five, five fields together give us a one and a five. So there's direct sum. Okay, you can check that uh, this kind of fusion rule satisfies the associativity condition. It says associative, so it's okay. And then this, uh, this matrix for the five particles is just very simple, zero, one, and one, one, just these two, if you just uh, follow this fusion rule. And uh, there, there are two adjacent value, which is uh, uh, this uh, one plus square root of five over two. So that is uh, this uh, uh, Fibonacci number. So that's why I call this a uh, Fibonacci onion. So this uh, is really the simplest uh, non-abelian onion we have. And here I want to say that uh, uh, this particular Fibonacci onion can be realized, hopefully experiments by this particular wave function. The chi two is a wave function with two fields along the level, then you, which is anti-symmetric function. We will raise to the third time Cube power, they're still anti symmetric wave function. So, this is a legal wave function for the uh, fundamental about the electrons. And this wave function is conjectured, we can be realized this if the first the four along the level is degenerate. Then the cooling interaction just creating this third order zero because we'll, the chi two is to have first order zero when two electrons are approaching each other. You know, raised to the third power, you get a third order zero. So, therefore, cooling interaction like it. But the lambda level don't like it because this wave function do not live in the first lambda level. They live in the first four lambda level. If a first four lambda level happen to be degenerate, then I'm thinking, yeah, this wave function will be probably as stable as this one third of the states. But we need the material where first the four lambda level degenerate uh, to, to realize this. So if we realize this, then we can have this uh, Fibonacci onion. 
Okay, so that is uh, uh, that really is about the fusion. And the the point is that uh, this fusion rule, this NIJK, is very much like uh, the very much a conservation law describing symmetry. And in particular, for example, when you have a symmetry group, uh, the, the charge of a symmetry group, the, the, what you can trap by the symmetric potential are representation of the symmetry group. So therefore, this representation have a fusion rule. This NIJK, it has a fusion of this uh, uh, representation of a symmetry group. And uh, then, then this uh, so then we start to think, of, oh, this NIJK is describing conservation law. And then we should uh, obtain symmetry group from NIJK. Yeah, from conservation law, we should obtain symmetry group. But actually, when you freeze press in such a precision, then you find that actually it's a, a very problem. Uh, it's known that uh, uh, there's a, a there's a fusion coefficient or fusion ring do not determine symmetry group. Uh, one example, which I just checked this morning, the, the, the dihedral group D4 and the cotinian group Q4, they have the same fusion rule, but they have diff they are different symmetry group. So it's really, but but this I think this point is very important. That means that uh, uh, symmetry is more than uh, conservation. So there's an additional layer in the symmetry. Uh, when we say con conservation, we kind of uh, overlook the ignore. And I bring this up really because uh, uh, in our Euro thing, we know there's a symmetry, there's an anomalous symmetry, and the other feature of symmetry. It turns out this so-called anomalous symmetry is actually referred to this actual layer, actual information beyond the NIJK in some sense. Okay. So, so therefore, by, by looking into this, uh, the actual layer, actual feature in the symmetry, it's really looking at symmetry more carefully. We can see this anomalous or some other feature. So I think that's maybe the one main, main point that this, yeah, it's a, yeah, we should look at symmetry from more, from a different angle. And uh, uh, so, so th this is a, a kind of starting to see that. Michael, yeah. So Yes, yeah, in this case, but actually it's depend on dimension, yeah. And uh, in higher dimension, you kind of do braiding. And then even even in higher dimension, I don't know, you have more different kind of braiding. So, so yeah, that, that's basically the, the feature, yeah. So this really is the feature where we, we view symmetry as a conservation law, means uh, as, a, as a fusion of particle. But the particle behavior is more than just a NIJK. There's a more feature in the particle behavior. And this uh, actual feature in the particle behavior is, this, uh, is really this, uh, uh, this actual feature of symmetry I'm talking about. But this is a pretty much like a, a topological fixation. You can say this NIJK is a one feature for topological fixation, but not all the feature. Okay, so then we can, then we want to say what is a, what the most general feature, most, most general data describing behavior of a topology station. In addition to fusion NIJK, we have something else. So, so this a fusion ring plus this actual data gave us a fusion category. So that's a, this is a scary name, fusion category, just a fusion ring with some actual data, actual feature. And then this, uh, this actual data things also led to this uh, more general way to view symmetry. So symmetry have actual features. Yeah, that's the point. And uh, so, uh, so this really, uh, so this really uh, uh, gave me some excuse uh, to to study the fusion category. What is fusion category? What actual data we get? But that's really a CFC symbol. And uh, so there are two examples I can have. One example is that uh, we can have so-called pointed fusion. That is a uh, we, uh, is it this, uh, we have two things, G1, G2, when fused together, we get a single G3. There's no direct sum. If there's no direct sum for all the fusion, it's called a pointed fusion rule. It's very simple. And this pointed fusion actually like a group. Indeed, it's like a group. So actually, in the pointed fusion are described by the fusion described by the group. It's like a group of multiplication. Okay. And uh, so, so then, uh, in this case, uh, then we say that uh, when the fuels are uh, uh, G1, G2, G3 in different way, and uh, they describe the same ground subspace, you know, you know, because when you fuse them different way, you end up with the same degenerate ground state. It's like a, you, you're like a, on the sphere, you have a three, 
three trap. You pretend the first two trap are one particle and the third trap has another particle, or you pretend the second or third trap is a one particle, first trap as a second particle, etc. This, but this different point of view will really give you right to same uh, same fusion space. But however, sometimes this different point of view give rise to different choice of basics. And uh, so, so therefore, it's the same fusion space, but a different uh, basis. So, but here the fusion space is one dimension. Uh, uh, so therefore, this uh, this uh, different different basis may only differ by a phase factor. So that's a that's a kind of view. Even for the point of fusion, you could have phase factor. This phase factor is kind of like a, a something related to uh, uh, to sigma symbol. And to, but to understand such a symbol, we can go back to SU2, which you are familiar with. I have a three spin, J1, J2, J3. Then you can fuse the three spin. Then there's a, a then there's a momentum decomposition. We have a two bases in the, in the same fusion space. One is a, so we just fuse J1, J2, J3. We may fuse J1, J2 into J1, 2. And then fuse J3 with J1, 2 into J1, 2, 3. Then that's total angular momentum may have this uh, some m quantum number. So that's big rise right, so one base. Another base is that we fuse the j2, j3 first to get a j2, 3, then fuse the j1 with the j2, 3 from to get a j1, 2, 3. Again, total momentum, then with the basis. And this, this really two bases. And the two bases are related by CJ symbol. And this CJ symbol is, is actual information I'm, I'm talking about. You know. So in general, when you consider fusion, uh, NIJK, but uh, this is not just classical object. They are really the fusion describing this uh, 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 ground state subspace. But NIJK only describe their dimensions and how their dimensions are related. They did not say how, as a subspace, as a quantum wave function, how wave function related. But as a subspace, it's hard to say how they relate. So we have to choose a basis in the subspace. They have to say how different bases are related. So that's that's this uh, this F symbol or six J symbol. I really, really try to to look into this more carefully. Not only look at the dimension of vector space, but also look at the vector themselves. So that's gave rise to this six uh, J symbol. So this, uh, but uh, in a more abstractly, is really the following. So this is a picture. I try to describe a F symbol in a more abstract way, uh, but also kind of experimental way. Suppose we have a four particle, a three, a four particle I, J, K, and L star. L star is antiparticle for L. So we have this kind of four particle. This describing the situation that uh, this uh, I, J, K would fuse into L. Then L would annihilate L star. When L annihilates L star, you get the identity of one, trivial particle one. Now how many one would give up this uh, uh, fusion space? Okay. So therefore. The dimension of fusion space tell you uh, how many L it can produce. So here in this picture, I say I have I J K. If a, if a fuse I J K, then I produce a direct sum of six L. So now we have six line. So that's a, that's what happens, six L. The six L just analog with L star, which produce this uh, 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 so at the end, what we have is just six L. We have I, J, K, we fuse into six L. But the six L are kind of equivalent. And which one is the first L, which are second L, is a, we can, it's, a, it's an arbitrary choice. Even further, we can rotate them continuously. We can have a rotate 45 degree between first L and the second L. So it's really unitary matrix. OK. And uh, these two natural bases are falling. You can fuse IJ first. When you fuse IJ first, remember IJK when they're far apart, you have nearly quantity dynasty. When you bring IJ closer, then they split. And uh, so they split, so that means IJ fuse to M, M prime, M double prime. Then you fuse the M with the K second, they split further into L. So they can see from here, you choose a particular uh, basis of this uh, uh, fusion space. Similarly, you can do the, you can fuse the JK first, then fuse it to back to N, N appear twice. Then fuse the N with the I, then they split into Ls. Then it's, at the end, you still get a six L, but then it's a different basis. Then the relation between different basis is a six J symbol or F symbol. 
So certainly in this way of dealing, in this way dealing, uh, in this definition, we can see that uh, we don't need to go into the symmetry. You can see in ordinary symmetry, we have we know m quantum number. So we, we know every state. But in this definition, we don't know m quantum number. We just uh, do this experimentally. We just uh, have a have a sphere with a three traps and bring two traps together to see how the analysis split. Then bring another two traps together to how they split. This splitting would naturally choose as a give us a basis. This is nearly the uh, ground state subspace. Okay, so yeah, this is a uh, yeah, maybe this uh, this kind of more physical way to introduce this uh, uh, F symbol. Okay, and then the the certain this F symbol have this uh, uh, self consistency condition. It's uh, that's a kind of a uh, 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 so called pentagon identity. That's when you have a four particle, this uh, uh, I, J, K, L fused into P. Okay, so now now total the five particle. And then there's a there's different way uh, to you know this is one way to fuse them. Uh, this is another way to fuse this four particle. The two different way two different way of fusion give rise same uh, subspace or uh, give same degenerate subspace. But uh, then but the different way give you a different basis. So therefore there's a way to relate this basis to that basis. So we can do this relation right. By using this, uh, uh, by using this uh, uh, three particle, by using this F symbol, because this F symbol relates the basis of a fusion of three particle. When you fusion of four particle, the relation between bases can be composed into this uh, fusion of three particle. So, like uh, here, we, we first uh, we first consider this uh, M K L fusion, but uh, this uh, we first fuse M and K, or we first fuse M. And uh, K and L, so these two different fusion give us this, uh, this kind of F symbol. And then we can we can do another step. Uh, you can see uh, this uh, this uh, go from here to here. We we first bring this uh, K line from to the left to the to the right and etc. And uh, so so using two F symbol, we can make this connection. Oh, there's another way to do that. We can we can we can do I J K fusion first. Uh, then move this J line first. Then here we need to do three steps to go from here to here. It's really different path to, to achieve same thing. Then we got this uh, famous relation that uh, this uh, composition of two F and the composition of three F should be the same. Yeah. And this is really a pentagon identity. So, uh, so, so uh, uh, that's it. So this is a, a kind of a, a elementary way to define a unitary fusion category. So these are two data, NIJK and F symbol. NIJK satisfies this uh, some associativity condition, uh, which uh, I think we discussed a little bit before. Yeah. So uh, again, the, the, the fusion should be associative. So this associativity requires NIJK satisfy some re relation like that. And then this F symbol satisfies this pentagon identity. And that really gave us this uh, uh, unitary fusion category. And uh, that's supposed to be a, a complete theory for one dimensional excitation. So we have a, a gap the phase in one gap, the one dimensional phase. Uh, in general, you can have a point like excitation. Then the behavior of the point like excitation would uh, be classified by, by this kind of uh, unitary fusion category. So th that's uh, their behavior. They cannot be go beyond that. Yeah, that, that's a basic uh, point. So let's consider a, 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 a simple fusion category, the point of the fusion category. So that's a very simple one, uh, how the pattern got the, the equation works. So again, this, uh, we say this, uh, this two different fusion may have this uh, phase factor, okay. And then we can, we can just, uh, 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 but the, is that using G1, G2, G3, we're just using IJK so, so that I don't need to redraw this figure. <laughs> okay, and uh, so, so therefore, so, so from here, uh, you can see we, we, in this, from here to here is that uh, it's, uh, uh, it's really, uh, it's, it's, this thing really relates with M 
and the K and L, that's a fusion MKL, they fusion these three particles in different way, give us this F symbol. But this M particle coming from the fusion of R and J, so this M here is very tiny. It's actually, it's a, this IJ here. So if just IJ fused with KL, we get this figure. Then similarly, uh, uh, this Q is a coming is a KL. So this, uh, this Q fused with, uh, uh, this Q fused with uh, IJ, Give it another F symbol, this IJQ, but the Q is KL, so we get this symbol, and that's it. And similarly, we can do this three step fusion, we get this feature. And then this uh, uh, panic identity became this uh, uh, simpler equation, and it says a uh, 6F together. Yeah, this uh, again is, is, uh, is uh, naively looks terrible. It's uh, again, it's a, it's a non linear algebraic equation, many unknowns are hard to solve. And, but here, there's one thing save us, that is uh, because F is a, a phase factor. So we can take a log of this uh, equation. We will take a log, it became linear equation. And uh, so this linear equation can be solved easily. And you can write a program uh, to solve this linear equation. So actually, so this, uh, this panel equation is much easier to solve. And the solution of this uh, Pentagon equation, this kind of Pentagon equation, is called a group cohomology because this IJK is belong to the group, so their solution is given by this kind of a group cohomology. So somehow this Pentagon equation group cohomology kind of uh, arise together. Yeah. And uh, uh, I I'm using this example because uh, actually this example is a uh, kind of real and. Uh, so, uh, so let's consider we have a symmetry uh, a breaking state. We have we have system with a symmetry G, find a group of G. Then we have a symmetry breaking states. In the symmetry breaking states, we have domain walls. Then you can just fusion for domain wall. So actually, the uh, the domain wall really satisfy this kind of fusion because domain wall is labeled by group element. Then when two domain wall fuse, really group multiplication. So the domain of fusion is this really this uh, this uh, this uh, point the fusion is the domain of fusion in the symmetry breaking states, and uh, and then if all the f equal to one, so then if all f equal to one, this is solution, <laughs> that trivial solution, and that is uh, this uh, domain of fusion. And uh, the interesting is that uh, because uh, not more non trivial fusion described by group cohomology, and we also know that uh, the the uh, uh, anomaly in symmetry in one dimension is also described by group cohomology of same HO upper three. So, so, so then it's easy for us to believe. I think there's paper on this. Uh, uh, that is uh, actually if a, if a symmetry is anomalous, yeah, anomalous symmetry can be spontaneously broken. Then the the fusion of the main wall for this anomalous symmetry will be described this uh, fusion uh, category just like that. So therefore, the uh, so actually this 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 mystery here that is a uh, when the symmetry is anomalous. So anomalous is a feature of symmetry, but when you look at the charge conservation, the fusion of the reputation is the same. So from the from the symmetry charge and their fusion, we don't see their uh, we don't see the uh, we don't see the anomaly. And you may say, okay, maybe including F symbol or CJ symbol for the symmetry chart, do you see anomaly? No, you don't see, also don't see anomaly. But anomaly is seen in a, in a more indirectly that we have to go to the symmetry breaking state of a spontaneous symmetry breaking state of anomaly symmetry. Then their domain wall fusion would reveal anomaly. And the domain wall fusion would have this uh, non trivial, uh, this uh, uh, CJ symbol. And, uh, and that reflects normally. So, so yeah, so this, this is a kind of a feature that uh, to see this, uh, yeah, the uh, symmetry have actual features and this, uh, this uh, CJ symbol, F symbol may, may capture this, uh, this actual feature of the, of the symmetry. Okay, so any questions here? So, yeah. So this, this H3, Index would, would not be a sort of label of the symmetry breaking state, it would be a label of, of the symmetry of the anomaly of the symmetry. Uh, H, you mean H upper three? Yeah. Okay, three coming from the following thing. Uh, you know, here we're talking about the one plus one dimensional system with the symmetry G. Okay, so, so that's so as soon as that data is fixed, I already know what H3 is. 
G. Yeah, once you know G, you know what is H3. But however, this, uh, this uh, solution is a particular element of H3. H3 is a so-called cohomology group. And uh, it has many, many solutions. And each solution belongs to the element of H upper three. So this solution has many classes. So actually H upper three is a, is a described class of those solutions. Yeah, so my, my question, I think, Scott, given the data of the homosymmetry acting on this method, yes. is the class already fixed? It's already fixed, yeah. If you know normal symmetry, you know particular class. Yeah. That means uh, there's a particular solution for this would fit that class. And so to figure out what that yeah, is, I, is that you can I, figure I, out I, exactly. So, yeah, there's a, there's a little bit of thing uh, we have say that uh, actually this equation has many many solutions. Uh, very often, two solutions are equivalent. Uh, they call the co-boundary, that's like a changing basis. Uh, but uh, but amazingly, even including uh, this mod out the changing basis, there are different class solutions. We are not equivalent, and that that non-equivalent class it corresponds to anomaly. So, so therefore, this uh, we have anomalies. The fusion of the domain world have this uh, non-trivial phase factor, which you you can tell is beyond this. You cannot uh, remove this phase factor by training basics. And uh, so, in some sense, uh, this is really kind of experimental way to measure <laughs> anomaly <laughs> by go to central breaking state and measure fusion of the domain world. Suppose you have extremely powerful experiments that can measure all these phase factor, then you can really do this and uh, 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 so 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 uh, yeah so in some sense the uh, uh, this category symmetry is a very much like experiment really describing all kind of experimental setup you can measure something it's a it's more direct yeah yeah so you said um, you need extra data to distinguish like different groups like you said you don't know you also say this extra data determines anomaly. Are, are these separate extra data or these? Yeah, yeah, at this, yeah, this is it's, it's sometimes separate. Yeah, what I say just a kind of inspires something like that in concrete detail is a is a is a more tricky. And this example is reflect this a trickiness. That is, if you only look at the group and look at the fusion of their group, actually I don't see anomaly. You know, I, I try to say anomaly of the group is this actual feature. But when you actually look at the reputation and look at the fusion category, anomaly is not there. But for this, but anomaly of group somehow is hidden in another, another setup. It's really the spontaneous symmetry break in the, in the fusion of the main wall. So, so in some sense, it's a anomaly of group is appear not in a charge sector, but in a twist sector. So whenever you have a central group, you have, you have two ways to look at it. One way is to, to think about conserve the charge. That's representation of the group. Another way to look at the central group is consider their central twist, the domain wall. And an anomaly actually means uh, is a symmetry charge is unaffected, but the domain wall sector is affected. That's definition of anomaly. Actually, from this point of view, we can see that anomaly is a very ad hoc. You know, when when I say the when I say symmetry have actual features, means uh, I mean actual feature beyond the fusion rule of a charge and the fusion rule of a domain wall. Then the actual feature should be can appear in both places. And uh, so this really relates to generalized symmetry. Now, if you do this way, it's a generalized symmetry. But if you only allow actual feature in the Treat the sector, <laughs> then you re that's that's an anomaly. So when you say anomaly, it means this extra feature in the central twist sector, not in central charge sector. So it's a very particular way to describing this extra feature, and uh, but that's a historical. And if you use using this uh, you know, category picture, then you find this a very uh, unnatural. Uh, so uh, it's more, much natural to think about actually uh, maybe in the next few lectures that's my main theme. Much like much to think a symmetry charge and a symmetry twist at the equal footing, and I think about this actual feature at the equal footing. Then, then this give you a more general point of view of a symmetry, and uh, actually that is the uh, maybe the uh, main point I try to make in those uh, in this series of lecture. Yeah. But in this case, all, all these extra data for charging clusters are already encoded in. 
uh, anomaly mean? Oh yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. I think uh, for the for the D four and the Q four and uh, I think the uh, the uh, the situation different. That is CJ symbol of representation would di di distinguish D four and the Q four. That I believe. I I didn't check because there's a theorem to say that uh, the fusion category would carry full data for the symmetry group. The fusion ring itself is not full data, but when, when the fusion category, there's a Tanaka duality, it really say that uh, the fusion category and the group have one-to-one -one correspondence. So that makes them believe that here, if you introduce CJ symbol for these two fusion ring, maybe there's two. Uh, so basically, basically that means that given the fusion ring, uh, this pentagon equation have uh, two solutions <laughs> and this different solution gave rise to the uh, gave rise to the uh, different uh, Q4 and the D4, that's I believe. And here actually a similar thing. You can see, given the same fusion ring, describe a group. This pentagon equation have a different solution described by this different cohomology class. So that's a, this, this is a simple example to see the same fusion ring can give rise to different uh, CJ symbol. And uh, I think this, uh, at this, uh, the the D four D four Q four distinction is a uh, more I like at this level. But a normal symmetry is a trick. More tricky, you have to go to a symmetry twist section. Yeah. So the D four and Q four, I think uh, the, when we talk about this, the fusion uh, ring is for the representation. Right? Yeah, for the representation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's different. So. So, so this is uh, this example is very different. So, uh, so this is a different example. So, so this is all only applied to symmetry breaking state. It's the domain wall of symmetry breaking states. The Q four D four is a charge set. Look at the symmetry charge point of view. So it's a it's a it's a very different actually. Yeah. Uh, so the, the the point I'm trying to make is that if you only look at the charge sector, you we, we do not distinguish a symmetry or normal symmetry. The distinction of symmetry or normal symmetry is not that charge sector. You know, in a charge sector, even the fusion category is the same for anomalous symmetry. But the anomalous symmetry appears in the in the symmetry breaking sector. The domain wall in the symmetry breaking sector, their fusion uh, have this extra feature. The F symbol in this uh more fusion sector reveal the what we call anomaly. Yeah, that that's a uh, that's a point I try to make here. So basically, when you have a, a normal symmetry, if you measure a charge, you don't see anything. <laughs> but if you go to symmetry breaking state and measure the thermal fusion, yeah, you can distinguish it. These are symmetry anomalous or not anomalous. So that's basically the, this kind of a, a suggestion. Okay, so so basically, uh, so yeah, that's a, that's a wonderful, more mathematical part. <laughs> and so the, uh, so the point is, is that the fusion category actually theory to one plus one D excitation. And uh, so the, the ground state subspace with the trap is called the fusion space. It's a home space. So if you read some category literature, you'll see, you see home a lot. But the home is a ground state subspace. And uh, then actually there's a, there's a one philosophy in physics that is a only home space are physical. I, J, all other things not physical. The home space is a ground subspace. This uh, object, this uh, extension, uh, a type, they all coming from a home space. And uh, so, so in some sense, I, I wish a uh, mathematician formulate the category theory totally in terms of home space. Uh, and, but uh, but in the standard math book, they don't do that. Uh, the home space is derived the concept. But physically, this is the only physical thing. And, uh, and the type of excitation is called the object. And the unit transformation between excitations, this operator is called the morphism. And uh, under the stable excitation, if the excitation is not your sum, the stable excitation is called a single object. And uh, the bound state is a fusion ring. So, so there's some, some translation between uh, the mathematical term and the physics terms. Okay. So, uh, 
so, so then we say that uh, this uh, unitary fusion category classified this uh, one dimensional topology extension. So it should be classified the one dimensional topology order because that's a, a possible topology extension and a possible topology order should be come together. And uh, but the, the, the answer is no, they, they don't do that. The problem is that uh, this, uh, uh, all these uh, fancy uh, fusion category, all of them cannot be realized except the trivial one. Only trivial one can be realized by one dimensional uh, system. And all I, everything else is not realizable. So in a sense, uh, there's no lattice model which can realize this uh, fusion category realize extension described by any non-trivial fusion category. So it looks like uh, we, 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 we did nothing here, you know, it's a, we, we have this very fancy mass, but it's a, they do not exist. Okay. So uh, so what is a, what's the problem? The, the issue, uh, so this issue is the anomaly. So, so here there's a, so when you have a something, this fusion category is like a something self-consistent, you know, from macroscopically, you have particle more around. So the macroscopic is self-consistent theory. But the microscopically, we don't have a lattice model to realize this a macroscopic self-consistent theory. And this phenomena happened before. You know, we have a field theory, which is like a macroscopic theory, uh, which is anomalous. And that one way to understand that is that uh, we don't have a lattice model to realize uh, such a, a field theory. And here it really means a gravitational anomaly. And uh, so, so therefore, this uh, 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 so therefore, the fact that uh, this uh, this fusion category cannot be realized, is, we can say that uh, the fusion category we can view this as a field theory. This a fusion category or this field theory have a gravitational anomaly, so this cannot be realized by the lattice model. So that's one point of view. So, so I really want to just uh, go along this. Uh, so, uh, uh, so why this? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, that one, have, I think that one may have some extra features. Uh, you know, the fusion category tell you something more precise. And uh, that one, you, you, you may have, say, you, you may have actual degenerate ground state. Let, let me put it, I think the answer to that is a, what the fusion can you realize is this a symmetric sub hyperspace. You, you need to make this restriction to, to have a exact to, uh, coincide with the fusion candidate picture. And uh, then this, uh, for example, with, without particle, you have a, a degeneracy, so it's given by order of group. And the fusion candidate theory say on a ring, you have no degeneracy. So that's a, that's a difference. Then the fusion category tell you that uh, the uh, you should uh, if but if you project in the symmetric subspace on the ring, you, you can always do so. For, even in symmetric breaking, they can project into symmetric subspace. Then that would match the fusion category exactly, I think. So so then, but once you project into this uh, symmetric sub here space, sub here space, then the, this uh, this many body here space don't have a tensor product decomposition. So that is a gravitational anomaly. So this is a, a, a it's kind of like this, yeah. So in a sense, uh, uh, when you add more sectors, then you can realize them. And uh, so in some sense, uh, you know, so you know, here, uh, thank you for the question. You know, here I try to describe uh, the uh, symmetry and the topologization in the in the same footing. On one you already can raise the question, the topology order is a system without symmetry. Then here you're talking about a system with a symmetry. And it looks like they are very similar. They are the they, same kind of, of particle, same kind of uh, secret symbol, things like that. That's a very similar theory. So what's the difference? And uh, actually there's a mapping almost like that. Uh, if you project into, restrict yourself into the symmetric sub space, then the, 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 the property of a symmetric system is very much like a topology order. Yeah. And uh, so, so, so actually one example you raise is, uh, is this. In a symmetric breaking state, if you project a symmetric subspace, 
then then this uh then this uh this uh, this uh, point fusion category is going to be faithful. Yeah. So there's there, 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 there something like that. Yeah. So if that instead of jump point is fine, then you can retrieve it from label set by that category. Yeah, but uh, yeah, there's a one one thing is a uh, uh, axiom for topology order is that uh, the the ground dependency on the sphere is always a one. Yeah. If it's not one, it's uh, unstable. It's a it's a it's like symmetry breaking state. So the topology really says that uh, the ground state is a stable against arbitrary per per perturbation. And there's a conjecture that uh, if a ground state energy on the sphere is not equal to one, such dependency is not not uh, robust against the uh, uh, perturbation. I think nowadays we understand on the sphere there's no non-trivial loop, there's no higher symmetry breaking. <laughs> so only zero symmetry breaking gave rise right for that. Then it's not robust. Yeah. It's kind of like that. Okay, so the so the way to to understand why 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 seemingly consistent theory can be anomalous, you know how do you tell a seemingly consistent theory is uh, anomalous or not anomalous? Then here is something like uh, the, another conjecture is a remote detectability uh, principle. If every topology equation can be remotely de detected, then then means it's normal free means they are realizable by lattice okay so uh uh but here i want to say that uh, this topological decision should be non-trivial the trivial one cannot be rem remotely de de detectable but remember non-trivial have two meaning one is called elementary another called uh, topological you know the difference is that uh, uh, for the particle, there's no distinction. Uh, they all they are, they are non trivial, just mean non trivial. But for the string excitation, the non trivial have two meanings. This string can be formed by the particle condensation. And this kind of uh, string excitation called a descendant and a not elementary. And the, in the gauge theory, the gauge flux is, a, is, a, is not formed by any condensation. And uh, actually, the gauge flux cannot end. The string station which cannot end is called the elementary. And if those non-trivial elementary station must be remotely detectable. And uh, so in this case, uh, uh, this should be realizable. Again, this is a conjecture. We say remotely developed means realizable. And uh, from this, uh, uh, from, from this uh, you can see that in one dimension, we cannot braid. There's no way to detect this particle by via just measurement at uh, infinity. Then we cannot do braiding, and uh, so so any non-trivial uh, one D particle is a uh, is a uh, is a uh, it cannot be detected remotely, so they are all anomalous. Yeah. And uh, then this uh, uh, then you, then you say that uh, this another philosophy. You know, if it's self it's self consistent, it must exist. <laughs> and uh, so actually, indeed, this uh, this. Uh, Unitary fusion category, this kind of one dimensional particle indeed exists, but do not exist by themselves as a one D system, but exist as a boundary of a two D system. So this self consistency means something, means that it exists, but exists as a boundary of two D system. So this is really a uh, light to the, uh, not the holographic point of view. Uh, that is uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 boundary uh, the boundary of uh, uh, is described by this. Uh, uh, diffusion category some kind of a uh, theory and then uh, it's realized by the uh, as a boundary of a bulk topology order and this uh, boundary determine the bulk so this uh, holographic principle really means uh, the bulk is uniquely determined by the boundary yeah and uh, yeah this is sounds kind of strange because of the boundary can be able to say the boundary space a boundary condition you know you know, as a theory boundary condition of a normal boundary condition, there's a all kind of a boundary condition. But it's hard to think of the boundary condition <laughs> can determine the bulk. And uh, I think the uh, yeah people raise this question. You know, what do you by boundary determine the bulk? This is a holographic principle. And uh, so here uh, we say that uh, the boundary is not just boundary condition. The boundary actually is a, a fusion category, means that. Uh, 
it, the data of boundary is those uh, uh, those are particles, all those are particles, okay. And those are those are those are non-trivial particles that boundary form a fusion category, and that is enough information to determine the bulk. Okay. In the later, I think I also I will mention that uh, actually this this uh, this, uh, this uh, fusion category on the boundary can also be replaced by operator algebra. So on the boundary, uh, you have uh, operators. Suppose a bulk have a big energy gap. Then you have a boundary operator only create a boundary extension below this bulk energy gap. Then the boundary have operator algebras. So somehow this boundary operator algebra carries same information as uh, this uh, fusion category we talked about. And so therefore we can also say that the boundary operator algebra uniquely determine the bulk. So therefore, when you say boundary determine bulk, it's not just boundary condition. Either it's a boundary excitation or boundary operator algebra. And this information somehow determine bulk completely. But even that is kind of surprising. And uh, I, this may be a pretty uh, deep thing. That is a, uh, uh, this is a holographic principle. But this version we described here is a categorical version. It's a the boundary extension, the fusion category determine the bulk uh, topology order. Okay. So, so from this point of view, we see that uh, the uh, the anomaly can be invertible, uh, can be non-invertible. You know, you know usually uh, when anomaly is first introduced, the anomaly is also invertible. Something can be canceled. But when you view this uh, the bulk topology order as a reflection for boundary anomaly, gravitational anomaly, then, then because topology order is not invertible. Most topology order do not have inverse. You have topology order, there's no other topology order, but after stacking, it becomes trivial. You cannot cancel that. And so, so therefore, this so non-invertible top, top, top topology order gives rise to non-invertible anomaly, or more precise, non-invertible gravitational anomaly. So this uh, this really led to this uh, uh, the more general view of a gravitational anomaly. So, but uh, when we stack actually this anomaly and cancel at the boundary, the the, the ball not really. Uh, the, it's a, the argument is falling. Uh, suppose on the stacking, if anomaly is totally cancel the boundary, then we will say the ball would become trivial product space again using this uh, Holloway principle. If a boundary have no anomaly. Then that means that means uh, it's realizable by the lattice in the same dimension boundary, and you don't need the bulk. A bulk can be product space. So that means uh, if a, if a boundary have no if a boundary is can if anomaly is cancel the boundary, that means the bulk became product space. That means a stacking of two bulk topology order correspond to equivalent to the trivial state or equivalent to to product states. Yes. In particular, the generalized computation moment is not measured by a side of central charge. It's something more general. Yeah, chiral central charge is a more ordinary gravitational anomaly. That is invertible. It can be canceled. Uh, after stacking, the chiral central charge just add. This one is something you, also, you can also call a non-global, non-perturbative gravitational anomaly. It's not, it's not self opened by by triangular diagram, it's 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 not that kind of thing. Using perturbation theory, we don't see we don't see this. It's almost like a a a a, a two anomaly for discrete symmetry. We have a discrete symmetry. You don't have a currents. Then it's very hard to to see uh, uh, this anomaly for discrete symmetry. So this uh, this uh, this uh, non invertible gravitational anomaly have that flavor. It's like an anomaly for discrete symmetry. But this is normally not 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 appear in perturbation theory. So so it's a uh, uh, so therefore uh, it is a, we we only understand the bulk topology order uh, you know uh, after that we, we we start to to see yeah there's a there's a, this a new version of anomaly. But however, it's a similar to this chiral center charge, and uh, uh, the bulk topology order, uh, the braid fusion category actually. The bulk topology is the braid diffusion category. So, so basically, you say that uh, the 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 braid diffusion category in the bulk describe non-invertible gravitational anomaly. Actually, braid diffusion category somehow miss the invertible one. 
So we don't we don't have too much intuition here. Yeah. And uh, so maybe we should call this. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's a that's a remark. Uh, uh, do I make a remark? Yeah, this is a remark. <laughs> yeah, we should call them differently. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, to call calling this uh, as a non-invertible Gaussian normally or quantum normally may be confusing because it's very different from the from the the one from, defined from diffeomorphism. But on the hand, uh, they this uh, the anomaly inflow this boundary bound relation is very similar. So 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 we just call it and. Uh, but it's neither causing confusions, yeah, especially from this uh, deformorphism point of view. This is very different from deformorphism point of view. Yeah. Okay, so, 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 yeah, this, this basically is the, the, the big picture, the big structure I'm going to, uh, uh, I want to say, yeah. And uh, so, uh, so now we can see that uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, Bray diffusion category, sorry, this, uh, this uh, unitary diffusion category really describes one dimensional extension, or more precisely, it's got a boundary for two dimensional extension. <laughs> so it's really 1D theory, it's uh, really 1D, but anomalous 1D theory. So that's, a, that's how we place it. It's anomalous 1D theory of, of boundary theory. So, uh, so then next we, we could do two dimension, you know, and the two dimension, uh, we have a new features. I just mentioned the fusion ring is a, is a very conservation law. The F symbol is an actual feature. Then in two dimension, we have even more features. And this even, even more feature is a braiding. Yeah, the, because in two dimension, particles can, can, can go around each other. So you have a braiding feature. So I, I, won't, I, won't, I won't do that in detail, but I just uh, uh, sketch it a little bit. Yeah, this, uh, uh, so we can we can we can braid uh, we can we can braid this uh, particle, but the most important thing is that I mean I want to just describe in the, the, this uh, uh, this kind of a braiding uh, so called a double braiding, uh, just this, this formula. What this formula is really about is falling. You have particle i, particle j. When you braid, when you move particle j around particle i by two pi, you get a phase factor. This phase factor is a mutual statistics. Uh, but then you say, well, if this particle i and j are now a uh, particle, then this braiding is very complicated. It's a unitary matrix, acting on degenerate ground states. So it's a mess. But actually, it's not a mess. Uh, actually, it's very simple. Uh, still, uh, you can choose some. Uh, 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 you can, this unitary matrix can be diagonalized. They say you can choose the basis, it can be diagonalized. So therefore, braiding the braiding i. Around J around the I uh, still give a phase factor. But you may get a different phase factor for different uh, because this matrix uh, uh, is a non, non, uh, is not one dimensional. But what is different phase factor really corresponds to called the fusion channel. You know, when I, J can fuse into K or K1, K2, K3. But you say if you specify I, J fuse into K in this channel, then this is statistics is a fixed. Uh, uh, this, this, so this is theta ij depend on the k. That that's it. So it's very much like an ordinary mutual statistics, except there's a dependence on the fusion channel. And once you specify fusion channel, this is just ordinary fusion statistics. So therefore, it's not too bad. So this, this number is uh, is not too bad. So uh, and uh, and uh, so so this uh, and this mutual statistics describe uh, this braiding called the R symbol. Uh, I don't let, let me do, not describe in the original R symbol. So, so therefore, this NIJK plus F symbol we talk about, then plus this R symbol describing braiding or these mutual statistics, then we get the braid diffusion category. So, the, so this R symbol is an actual feature, or the or mutual statistics or self statistics is this actual feature. Uh, but that this feature only appears in two dimension. Now, now you can imagine in three dimension. <laughs> Not only can have a particle, you may have a strings, and the particle string may break, the string string may break. You know, they become, this actually became massively more complicated. But but uh, but then that you are talking about a higher category. So basically, the you know, each higher dimension, this actual feature became more and more complicated. You can add more features, and this actual feature really uh, mathematically described so-called higher category. But higher category is still is too complicated. I think. Uh, 
uh, we still don't have a very detailed mathematical theory, but we can imagine uh, that such thing uh, can be developed. Okay. So, so then we say that, uh, okay, this gray diffusion category describing a particle in two dimension space. And suppose you can, we, have a, we have a list of gray diffusion category, does that tell me that's also a list of a, a topology order? No. And uh, 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 again, we have a uh, we have a problem. Uh, uh, you know, braided fusion braided braid diffusion category is still too general. Uh, it's a low particle which is undetectable. We can have a particle which can go around another. Any every particle around it have no no braiding. Okay, have no 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 mutual disk. So therefore, we have to we have to choose a particular braided fusion category such that this mutual statistics angle is a kind of non-trivial between every pair of particles. So actually, there's a non-trivial mutual state between every pair of particles, something like that, okay. And this kind of a, a non-trivial uh, particle called uh, non-degenerate uh, bridge version category or called uh, this uh, uh, module tensor category. So just uh, it's all different names. So, so only a subset of a bridge version category is normally free or uh, may correspond to a topology order. But whether this uh, subset, uh, let me just skip this. Yeah, we talked about it. Whether it's a subset of a non degenerate bridge fusion category describes a variable or not, again, no. <laughs> uh, that's because there is a certain invertible double edge order, uh, which, which, which uh, uh, this, uh, this bridge fusion category cannot detect. Okay, so this invertible topology order basically is uh, given by stacking. When you're stacking two topologies together, you get a third topology order. And this stacking operation is called a monoid. You know, two things stack give you a third thing. And they are associative. You know, one, two first, then stack three, or two, three first, then stack one. They kind of uh, associate. That's a monoid. And the monoid actually is a, like a group, except they don't assume there's an invert inversion. Just uh, do not assume this inversion. Everything else is the same as a group. So actually, topology order and the stacking operation form a monoid. And then certainly inside this monoid, there's a subset which, which can be have inversion. So they form a group. And so, so this subset of topology order is called the invertible topology order if they can uh, uh, form a group. And also AB stacking and the BA stacking is the same. So therefore, uh, so this uh, this uh, this uh, monoid is a community. So this group is abelian. So if the invertible is abelian group, okay, the stacking topology from abelian group. And uh, the the familiar example would be this uh, the P, for the fermion system, this the P wave shape kind in one dimension, uh, P P plus I P in two dimension. They are example of fermionic invertible topology order. Uh, when they stack, it become trivial fermionic phase. And uh, for bosonic system, there's an EA the quantum Hall states, which I think I mentioned this uh, before. Yeah, this EA the quantum Hall states, it's the eight layer quantum Hall states, and uh, that is also uh, invertible. And this quantum Hall state is non trivial, the boundary is non trivial, it's chiral, but the bulk have no anion. This K matrix have a determinant equal to one, so there's no non trivial bulk anion. And uh, so, and uh, because there's no non trivial bulk anion, so this this kind of thing cannot be detected by this uh, uh, by by this uh, fusion category or bridge fusion category, which describe a bulk of onions. So therefore, this uh, so actually it's a module tensor category theory really classify two D topology order up to this uh, invertible topology order. So up to E eight state. So this is the statement. Uh, but this is a yeah we are we are, we are very happy with this statement because E eight state is kind of understood. So just we just a. Uh, then we, uh, so up to the E8, we understood this classification. Then we more or less have a full classification of a two dimensional topology order. So basically, that's, a, that's really led to the, the theory using a module tensor category theory uh, to describe a two dimensional topology order. Okay. And uh, uh, so let me just skip this. Okay. So, uh, okay. So the so what is this uh, module tensor category theory and uh, can we make a list of it? Uh, basically, we have to make a list of uh, n, f, and r. And uh, if I make this list, then we have this uh, list of a module tensor category. Then we have a list of 
two-dimensional topology order. So really, this is like a classification problem. And uh, but this is difficult. However, there's a uh, there's a, a simple way to do this. That is a let us uh, truncate this uh, uh, our data because this this data is too complicated. Let's uh, keep this in IJK. Drop the F. That sounds very dangerous. <laughs> and uh, keep the R, but only only double braiding. <laughs> So basically, I'm going to do this uh, dramatic uh, approximation. It looks like it's totally unreasonable, but turns out that uh, if you uh, if you if you keep this uh, uh, this mutual statistics, then it's uh, it's okay to drop f, you know. Uh, so somehow it works. So actually, uh, this approximation or this simplification indeed lose information. But not much, actually. Uh, lose, uh, at least for simple case, lose uh, very little information for simple case. Um, but the theory, resulting theory is much more simpler. So, so here, uh, I just, just try describing this uh, kind of uh, truncated uh, theory. The full theory in the, in the Alexis uh, paper, in this uh, paper, in the appendix, it's a long appendix, you can see the more full theory. So, so therefore, truncation is really like we only keep the NIJK and the mutual statistics. This is theta. But however, these mutual statistics can be obtained by self statistics completely. Uh, the argument is falling. Uh, so, so what is uh, uh, what is this uh, 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 what is uh, this uh, mutual uh, so how, to see how the relation, let's consider the fusion. We have a fusion I, J, fuse into K. Okay. We want to measure the, the statistics of a K particle by measuring the spin. You know, we, we do this 90, uh, 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 300, uh, 360 rotation of this K particle, just do two pi rotation. Then we get this uh, 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 two pi SK. SK is a spin of this K, it's a, it's a spin. Okay, but the spin of this K can be obtained in the following. When you do the two pi rotation of I and J, you see that I and J itself rotate by two pi by themselves. So then we have a contribution for SI and SJ from this spin. But then this, uh, this I also go on the J once. So you can see this, uh, this mutual statistic angle. And there, this combination Give us uh, the rotation, act, action rotation on the single fusion product, this K. So K is a fusion product of I and J. Then from this, we can see that uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, mutual statistics angle is given by the spin of each particle. And the spin also determines self the statistics. So self statistics and spin determine the mutual statistics completely. So therefore, we only have NIJK and SI. So this is truncated the data, which is much simpler. And uh, then to then we can uh, it's a, yeah we can we can really do this yeah. And so then we can use this truncated data to formulate the theory and try to build a table, yeah. And uh, uh, it's a and actually this uh, this truncated data can be, have a name called the modular data. Uh, so I'll try to explain. And this truncated data is related to this ST matrix we studied before. Remember, we have a ground state. Uh, we can use, we can do the 90 degree rotation and then do overlap to extract S matrix. Uh, we can do the shear deformation and do overlap to get a T matrix. So from top, from, 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 our, from our ground state distribution topology order, we have this ST matrix, which form SL 2 z representation. And then we have this uh, truncated data from uh, module time set category. There's a fusion ring and a spin of each particle. And there's an amazing relation by Valanda that is uh, this S matrix and NIJK have, really, have this uh, amazing relation. And also it's known the T matrix and the S have this relation. The eigenvalue of T matrix is really correspond to the uh, uh, spin of each particle. Okay, 
And the dimension of S matrix and T matrix happen to be the number of type of particle we have. We have a three type of particle, the T S T matrix we took a three by three. For Fibonacci and Yang, we have two type of particle, trivial and phi, this is ST matrix two by two. And then the, uh, so we have this amazing relation. And uh, so we can see that from ST matrix, we can get uh, N and S. Then from NAS, we can get ST matrix. Again, there's uh, some re relation from category theory. From category theory, we can determine this ST matrix uh, 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 like this. Yeah. So, so there's a, uh, so there's a, uh, there's a, this uh, translation between the two. Actually, this is the reason why I developed this category theory. Because uh, remember, when you're using ST matrix to describe a topology order, it's a pretty convenient. But however, we only know the ST matrix should be representation of SL2Z, but that's condition too weak. There are too many SL2Z representation do not correspond to topology order. Now, with this relation to fusion category, then we can say that uh, this ST matrix should be related to NIJK and also S. And this, uh, then there's a lot of condition from, uh, from this uh, 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 module tensor category point of view. There's a lot of other conditions. So we can combine these two conditions together uh, to get the condition uh, for, for, for everything. Okay. And uh, so this is uh, what I'm doing this uh, in the last three years. I read a lot of program try to, <laughs> try to try to build a table for this. And uh, so uh, so I will uh, I will skip uh, many things. Uh, certainly uh, how you derive this, you know, I don't know how to derive this, you know, uh, especially from microscopic theory, how to derive this. Uh, you know, uh, I just uh, you know, outline some sketch, which is kind of technical but not rigorous. Uh, you you may you, you, there, there's some way to see why 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 they are uh, uh, why they are related. So maybe that, let me just say say one thing. It can give you some flavor, and uh, and uh, 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 let's consider a uh, torus. Okay, this torus is our space time. The surface of torus is our space at a given time. And inside torus is like time evolution. Okay. So they can like, imagine this, uh, this, uh, this uh, Lagrangian is, uh, is, is topological. So it's time evolution uh, gave rise, this uh, Euclidean time evolution would give rise a particular ground state on the surface of torus from this evolution. Okay. That's one, just one particular state. How to get other, other ground state? We know the ground state on torus is degenerate. How other states are, are, are obtained? Well, we can bury a water line of a, a particle inside, below this, in, inside this solid torus. Then after time evolution, the surface is still ground state because the water line is inside. And, but, but then this, this surface would give us a different degenerate ground state. So therefore, the degenerate ground states are labeled by the water line uh, inside the torus. Okay. Label labeled by that. So therefore, we can use this picture to say this is one ground state. The different eye gave us different ground states. That's the truth and basis. You get a particular basis of all the ground states. Remember, S matrix is a is a, this ground state overlap with a ninety degree rotation, the twisting this. And uh, there is a way to to do this overlap, but you need some ima imagination. So, so this uh, this is a torus. Okay. After 90 degrees, there's another torus. And this is vertical, and it's another torus. <laughs> so that's famous. So that's a one torus, another torus, two solid torus. Glue together, you get a sphere, actually. <laughs> so this is really a sphere, and, uh, which, uh, and uh, these two torus happen to be uh, 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 glued together with anti rotation. Then when you have this water line in the first torus and the second torus, then we get a two link the loop in the sphere. And uh, so actually this, this two link loop is two water line of a two part IJ particle. And this, uh, the amplitude of this two water line is this S matrix. <laughs> so, the, so, the, so the argument like that, it's not rigorous, but you can see the connection. And using this argument, so we connect the S matrix from the ground state the data to link the loop which is, this is a fusion category data. So people, people can catch this link loop uh, using fusion category or module tensor category. Then you can see this relation. 
Okay, so this is a, a one way to compute this, uh, 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 derive this uh, Valinda formula. So uh, let me just uh, skipping that. And uh, yeah, maybe there's a, a this uh, this there's a uh, there's one relation which is also kind of amazing. Uh, that is the uh, the fusion fusion ring have a big constraint on the possible uh, spin. And this is a uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, this relation is pretty important. Also quite amazing. Usually, when I say the spin is just a uh, statistics, it can be any any number, even even any real number. In two dimension, we don't have any spin quantization, so spin can be any real number. Okay. But however, uh, however, the fusion ring would uh, this uh, NIJK would constrain spin to be rational number. And the only finite set of rational number for every given this uh, fusion ring, the only finite set of a rational number which are, are compatible. So this is tremendous because uh, once you have no fusion ring NIJK, the only finite number of choice of S, <laughs> then we can check among those finite choice of S which one is consistent, which is inconsistent. Then we can we can build a table. So that uh, uh, that that's 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 a that is a very cheap way to build a table of a non tensor category. Then how to see this uh, relation is really falling. So we consider this uh, I, J, K, we have three particles, maybe the L on the sphere, so, so the, the whole thing can fuse into uh, some ground state. Okay. And uh, so then we say that, uh, uh, so then we say that we have this, uh, we, can, we, can, we can move this I, Around the J, then move move I around the K in two steps. I move I around the K and J together as a one step. These two operations should be the same. Okay. However, these two operations are kind of complicated because uh, on the sphere when you have four particle I J K L, there's a ground subspace. There's a it's a multi-dimensional vector space. So those W matrix are just a unitary matrix acting in a multi-dimensional space. So it's a big matrix. So, so therefore, what we have is a product of these two matrix equal to a third matrix. And I have a lot of information, but let's don't do that. Let's take a determinant. <laughs> if the product of the two matrix is a third matrix, their determinant should be also equal to equal. The determinant is the same. But when you do determinant, the things became simpler. Because determine only care about the, the, the diagonal uh, eigenvalues. But when you diagonalize the matrix, what you get is a mutual statistics. And once you specify the, once you specify the uh, fusion channel, these eigenvalues are all known, all determined by this S, as we just argued. So actually determinant is known. Once you know the fusion, we know they're determinant. If you know, if, if you know N and S, we know we know this determinant, and so basically that uh, this is formula for this determinant. Okay, and then then we can just rewrite this in terms of this uh, of this relation. So uh, 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 into this relation, yeah. So this uh, there's, there's some huge tensor when the contract with S should be equal to integer. That's it. And uh, this can this and this this matrix or this ten, this rectangular matrix is uh, invertible. I mean, so it's a sorry, not uh, yeah. I think I think I say it's an invertible. So therefore, uh, it's a, there's no no null space basically. So no null space. So all the s are determined because there's a mode one. So there's a more choice, and uh, so this is a way to prove that in this two paper they use it to prove that the s should be rational number. So the topological spin cannot be real number; has to be rational number. And they are determined by the n. Okay, so so this is a, a, a this is a also very important relation. But once we know have this relation and then plus uh, this uh, condition, so like a we have a list of all conditions. So this this, this is like all the associativity condition we mentioned before. Basically, it means these two n matrices commute actually. And there's some other uh, some other relations. So then using the Valandai formula, we can using n to derive ST matrix. Then ST matrix should satisfy this uh, SLZ representation and things like that. So basically, uh, I won't go into detail. Basically from here, we can get a bunch of uh, 
uh, relation constrained on the S and T matrix or maybe on the N and S. Okay. And uh, then at the end, we get this uh, uh, table finally. And uh, so this table is a, uh, so this is only physics table, you know, they only classify S and N and S, not the classified multi-tensor category. So there's a gap. But this gap is small, so let's ignore this gap. And uh, so in this table, I list, uh, I describe each module tensor category by uh, by their particles. Like this is three means that you have three particle. This one 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 means that each particle is quantum dimension equal to one. And this is this this is S, you know. Suppose I should I should list N I J K. But NIJ is too much data. The rank three tensor is very hard to make into a table. So, so instead of NIJK, I only list quantum dimension. Usually it's okay. Uh, usually there's no degeneracy. And uh, so this is a uh, uh, so this is the abelian quantum Hall states where this is a one. The statistic is a one third. So this is a two to one double layer quantum Hall states. And this, uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this single Samyang series here is a one and a quarter, a zero and a quarter, that's a Samyang. Quarter is a Samyang. And the Fibonacci is a, is a, is a, is a this, that, that one is a Fibonacci. So this, uh, this two particle, this is a Fibonacci. And uh, strictly speaking, I think, uh, do I have the other? Uh... Okay, yeah, strictly speaking is this one. And, uh, uh... Okay, this is a chi three square. Remember, chi three is a three field along the level, and we square the wave function. And this wave function became bosonic, it's symmetric. This wave function also Fibonacci, it's kind of like Fibonacci. But uh, but this particular bosonic wave function is called the SU two level three uh, theory, which is given by uh, by this uh, is a they have four particle. So basically, uh, what what I try to say is that yeah, we can we can have a table for topology order and uh, and then the many, uh, you, you know, uh, some of them probably easy to realize by experiments, some is not, yeah. Okay, yeah, so that's kind of a conclude or a kind of a review of this uh, summary of this uh, topology order from microscopic and a macroscopic point of view. I think the, and the, and the in the next sec, uh, the lecture, uh, well, I will I'll switch to concentrate more on symmetries, you know, how uh, the, uh, so, uh, but I already kind of inject some information here. So, so you can see that the, the symmetry, uh, 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 we try to view symmetry from fusion category point of view, from fusion point of view, from selection point of view. And then we see that, yeah, only using NIJK is not enough, we have other, other features. But these other features happen to be the feature in, already in the topology order. Okay, so therefore this theory for topology order actually naturally became a theory for generalized symmetry. Okay, so uh, so 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 then I will so the next lecture I will try to start uh, this direction, and then after that then I try to uh, uh, argue that uh, uh, we have a, a rather complete description of symmetry uh, using the symmetry data or maybe using tabular data you can determine the gapless state. Yeah, there's a hope to do that, and uh, uh, not everybody think that is possible, but uh, at least uh, at the moment, let's uh, be optimistic and hopeful and push uh, to see how far we can go. So that's all we're gonna uh, kind of say. So any questions here? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so why did we make it go to the part to the lesson for part So why did we, why did the problem be trying to do the generalization for part I mean, Oh, yeah, thank you. And, uh, for the fermion is a uh, it's called a super modular and uh, yeah we have a we have a similar thing for the uh, for the uh uh for fermion system but it's uh, more complicated and uh, the reason for fermion system they have similar you know so fermion have nijk have everything but this s matrix is uh, determined by this it's not invertible so fermion has is not so it's not modular so it's not invertible, so it's not SL2Z. So then we mean suddenly means a lot of condition. Then there's a way to try to fix it. So actually one way to fix it actually is very simple. Uh, 
we, we, we have this table. Okay, we have this table. Then we try to see uh, some of those, uh, some of those topological order have a hidden Tor code. <laughs> and it can be viewed as a, as a Tor code. And the fermion is a Tor code from its own fermionic topological order. And, and the whole thing is a prolonging topological order. So the one way to do so is that we, we, we select those, uh, uh, some type of bosonic topological order, order which identify is have a parent, uh, a to, have a shadow of a Tor code. They identify the fermionic part. Uh, that part is the fermionic topological order. So this is one way to, to class the fermionic topological order. So you can see it's, a, it's a more complicated. And uh, so then there's a lot of trick how to do that uh, more easily. But indeed, uh, uh, you are totally right. And a similar, actually similarly, you, you can do this uh, for, for every topological order with a symmetry. First have the topological order with a Z2 symmetry. Then we just gauge the Z2. <laughs> then you gauge Z2, then you also get a Tor code. But, uh, but the Tor code, the fermion, sorry, the, the E particle, both of them can form a topological order. But that top order would have a Z2 symmetry because E particle have this uh, Z2 fusion rule. So again, you look for bosonic top order with a shadow of Tor code, but, uh, but it's, a, it's an E condensation, not F condensation. So, 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 so we are this kind of thing. Uh, actually, we will have this table. You can, in principle, you can construct the top order with a fermion, with a, uh, with a symmetry, or fermion with a symmetry, everything. But, uh, but uh, this is start. Once, once you see this relation, you can, from the subcategory, you can, you, can, you, can, you can do this kind of thing. Yeah. But unfortunately, uh, you know, just, uh, 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 just last week, uh, we, uh, the, the program uh, ran through and we got uh, this table for, the, for rank nine. You know. uh, this is for rank uh, five. You know. And uh, uh, this paper is a is a first uh, paper for rank four. It's a uh, 07, so 15 years ago. So 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 from, from 15 years we come rank four to rank nine. It's a big progress because two years ago it's a rank six, mm -hmm. and uh, so 13 years go to four to six, and uh, so we make it we accelerate it. Then these two years were from six to nine. <laughs> Yeah, so this is a, uh, yeah, this program is like classing topology, this is like a classing finite group, it's a similar thing, it's a, it's a it's kind of big project. But, but, but certainly if you understand this better, then, then the many other things can be addressed, yeah. Okay, yeah, see you next week then. <laughs>